Welcome to this video, where I'm going to be showing you exactly how to set up the Celestron 114 LCM computerized telescope. As you can see, it has literally just arrived, and I'm going to be unboxing this telescope and just showing you step by step everything that you need to do. I'm also going to be sharing some tips and suggestions along the way to ensure that you get the most out of this computerized telescope. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback at any point, drop them down below and I'll do my best to help you out. With that said, let me get this unboxed and let's get started. So I have just opened the lid of the box and here is my first tip for you. Take a picture or refer back to this video at any point to see how all of the boxes go into the outer box because you'll find that if you ever want to store your telescope away, perhaps you want to sell your telescope, you probably will get stuck working out how it all goes back into the box. At least I've done that multiple times. So a little tip for you and we'll move on to the next step. So the next thing that I'd recommend at this stage is just taking note of what came out of each box. It's also a good idea to keep all of this external packaging as well. That will help to keep your components safe should you ever decide to store them away or if you ever needed to uh, ship this telescope if you are selling it. So good idea, keep all of this packaging and just know where they come from. So I've just taken the tripod out of that box and basically just removed all the external packaging. Now what we need to do is extend the tripod and make sure that that in the middle there is flat and then essentially just undo each of those mechanisms on each leg because we need to extend the tripod. Now here it's really important that for each and every leg that they are fully extended and then we just clip it back. So like that. So I do that for each and every one and we can move to the next step. So they're all now fully extended. That looks completely flat. Make sure you're on a flat surface and we're ready. Now it's time to put the accessory tray on. So all we need to do for that is essentially line up that's on there. So you'll see just slots on there like that. And then we basically just twist clockwise so that it locks in place there. Hopefully you can see that. We are now locked in. That is now secure on the tripod. Now we need to place the motorized base on top of the tripod. So what we need to do here is make sure that those three feet there essentially align with the parts on top of the tripod. You should see that, but you'll notice if I just did that there, for, for instance, like that, we need to make sure that's obviously those three legs are in place. And then essentially all we need to do is you'll see there's a screw at the bottom here and I'll, I'm actually going to hold that down and we're just going to screw that in place. So I'm turning that screw clockwise and it's putting that mount in place, that motorized mount. So now it's fully secure, we're ready for the next step. Now we need to loosen the altitude lock and rotate the tube clamp so that the telescope mounting knob is positioned on top of the base. And then we essentially are tightening the altitude lock again. So here is the altitude lock. So I'm going to anti-clockwise there and you'll notice on the other side that loosens this up. So what we need to do is just turn that around so it's at the top essentially, and then tighten this again. Now it's time to place the optical tube into the fork arm. So first and foremost, be really careful, unpackage the optical tube. You'll have lots of packaging, some bubble wrapping and some also some, some paper as well. Just be really careful, you don't want to damage the optical tube. And then essentially, we're, what we're going to be doing here is taking this over to our fork arm and we are going to be sliding that in. So firstly, you may need to unscrew this here and then we are just sliding the dovetail into kind of center position. Be really careful, I'm holding this here and I'm just screwing this in place. Make it nice and tight because it's got to you can see it's got to support this telescope so we've got lots of room to go keep going clockwise 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 and we should be you know be really careful before you take your arms away we should now be on
So now you need to find your bag of accessories and you need to get uh, the lower power eyepiece, which is the 25 millimeter. So it's this one here. You'll notice it's slightly longer than the other one. The other one's a nine millimeter. Now that will give you increased magnification. So that's great when you've already found the celestial object and you basically want to zoom in if you like. The 25 millimeter is lower, lower power and it essentially gives you a, a wider field of view of the sky. So you can see more at once if you like. That's for finding objects, this is for zooming in. So what we want to do here is basically get it out, be really, really careful. And then we're going to be taking this to our focuser. Take that cap off. That should just come out, prise that out. And then you'll probably need to kind of unscrew these a little bit. So it's that one done and this one done. I'm going to leave that tag on for now, but we can always remove that later. And then we're popping it in. So you want that this way around. You're putting that in. If it doesn't go in, it can in, it can indicate, so make sure you don't lose that, by the way. It's a good place to put that on the accessory tray. If it doesn't go in straight away, it may be that you haven't unscrewed these enough, which I think was my problem. Yep, I'm now in. And at this point, just basically screw these back in place. Don't need to put too much pressure on it, but you want to screw it in place. Now, the next thing we need to do is add the finder scope, which is this component here. Now, to do that, first find it in the bag of accessories. Take all the packaging off. And then firstly, make sure it's round the right way. It should look like this. There's a bar on top. You should see it here. It will say something like Newtonian on it. And then once that's kind of, once you've got that ready, you have to slide it on. But the best way that I've found to do it is to get a kind of mini screwdriver. There's two screws there. Hopefully you can see them. And I basically unscrewed both of them so that they were loose. That opened this up and enabled it to slide on. And then I screwed this tighter so that it is now on there securely. That's the best way I've found to do it. And it's how I recommend it myself. Now you might have noticed there's a tab here. We need to pull that out and that will enable us to begin using the finder scope because it's battery operated. So bear in mind, you may need to change the battery if you leave this on or it runs out. So basically turning it on is via uh, this particular mechanism here. I don't know if you heard that click. That would now be on. And then when it's off, remember to turn it off when you're not using your telescope. So now you're going to want to go back to the box that the tripod come out of and look for this little plastic hand control holder. Now, what we, I recommend that you do at this point is putting it on near this little port here, because that's where the hand control is going to go into. So somewhere here would make sense. And you just do literally place it like that and then push it on and it'll clip on like so. Now we just need to plug the hand controller in and put it in that holder. So as you can see here, that's the kind of ending of it. I'm just going to line that up. Plug that in and it will click. And then from here, we're literally just putting this into this here. Looks like I've put it around the wrong way, but you get the idea. It goes in like that. At this point, we want to remove the battery cover. So there's a little button here. You push that in and then prise that open. I've done that ahead of recording just for ease of uh, showing you how it's done. And that comes off. At this point, you need to add eight double A batteries into, if I put that, I kind of want to leave that so it doesn't fall down. Basically, you can take this bit out here, hopefully, there you go. You can take this bit out here, put eight batteries in, so in both sides, you'll see, and then put that back in that compartment there. That's going to operate this telescope, the computerization aspect. So you do need eight double A batteries. You need to supply them. You won't get them in the rest of the box so bear that in mind once you're happy once they're in you know all correctly you essentially just put this cover back on and put it in place make sure it's all lined up and put it back in place i'm going to do that off a of video at this point your telescope is set up you can take it outside and you can begin using it just don't forget to take the lens cover off which you can do via literally just prising it just be a bit careful but you are ready to go. You can now use the different eyepieces as and when you need. Look through this eyepiece here and begin observing. Of course, don't forget to use the hand control panel to identify objects in the sky. Bear in mind that this is a fork arm, so this can go up and down like this. And don't forget to leverage the finer scope. So that's how to set up the Celestron 114 LCM telescope. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. I'll get back to you and help you as best I can. With that said, best of luck with this telescope and good luck.